they are the future leaders of America. They are the future lawyers. They are the future politicians. They are the, the future leaders in almost every category. And so if this is what they believe about America and are so proudly saying at graduation, we ought to really be concerned. So let's roll it. This, this first uh, part of the speech is from, again, this was literally this morning. This was just a few hours ago, uh, by Robert L. Clinton IV. He is uh, now, I guess, a graduate of Harvard Law School. And uh, let's just play this, this one clip. Video we one. will be decision makers, and we will have discretion. Over and over, we will bear responsibility for making decisions that will change other people's lives. He's right. Think about just some of the people whose lives we may help shape. Women dealing with the fallout of having their reproductive rights stripped. Here we go. Immigrants fleeing places where there are no universities left from which to graduate. Trans and queer people forced to hide who they are. Climate refugees escaping homes that have become uninhabitable. One of the one in three black boys who can expect to go to jail in his lifetime. And citizens whose only mistake was being born poor in a country like America that criminalizes poverty. <laughs> All right, let's pause for a moment. I saw Sean's face. You guys have to understand, I was watching this this morning and it was like one after the other. I, I didn't think it could get worse. You know, he's doing the reproductive rights thing. I'm like, okay, of course that's gonna happen. And then the trans and queer thing. And then the climate change thing. And then the like whammy to end all whammies was at the end with America criminalizing poverty. Are you bleeping kidding me? It is so gross. It is just so gross. And so he's saying all of these lies about America and they are lies, lies. And even more concerning than that, where it was the roaring applause of the students. And you'll see in subsequent clips that, that when these, when sentences like the ones you heard are spoken, there's just thunderous, emphatic support from many of the people in the audience. And then the, the uh, camera pans to the student body and people are standing up and clapping. So again, this is something that we all ought to pay attention to because people could go, oh yeah, that's just one student. That's one super woke student who made a super woke claim. Yeah, it's par for the course right now in American universities, but that's just, you know, one person. No, look at, look, look at the entire audience. That doesn't mean that every single person in the audience agreed. I was texting with some people who I know, my friends who are still there, who are writing to me like, oh my God. But it, but it is worthy of notice that a lot of them did agree. So I want to go through, and I won't spend too much time on it. We could literally spend like eight episodes, one for each lie that was just spoken there. But I just want to go through and sort of debunk because one of the problems in this country is that when we hear something like this repeated enough, it just kind of becomes accepted. That's that's the you know very mainstream saying. If you repeat a lie enough, then it becomes a truth, or at least believed to be a truth. So let's go through here, okay? So this law school student said, "Quote: Women dealing with the fallout of having their reproductive rights stripped." And to back up, as we just heard, he was saying, "These are you know we're the leaders, and these are the people who we're going to be fighting for and representing." Women dealing with the fallout of having their reproductive rights stripped. Okay, let me just pause for a moment. I am a woman, and I am someone who is very, very conflicted 
morally and legally on the subject of abortion. I have said this so many times on this show when I'm guest hosting for Dennis. It, it, I'm very conflicted about it. I would not call myself a pro-life absolutist nor a pro-choice absolutist. I frankly don't really quite know where I stand. But there is this myth in this country right now that women writ large are having their reproductive rights stripped. Look at that gratuitous statement. That is not true. First of all, in approximately half of U.S. states, blue states, a full abortion or I shouldn't say full abortion, very uh, robust abortion rights are permitted. And by the way, even in many red states, abortion is permitted. I'll give you an example. What do people consider to be the most, you know, conservative, handmaid's tale-esque, women-hating, abortion-denying state in the union? People would think of Florida. Big, bad governor Ron DeSantis, who, by the way, I love. Just for the record, I love Ron DeSantis. But you, you know my point. People are going, oh, my gosh, Florida is this horrible place. Let me tell you right now what Florida has on the books with regard to abortion. Abortion is permitted up until six weeks. And then there is a subsequent law that is coming into effect that actually has extended that to 15 weeks. Now you can agree or disagree with that. You can think six weeks is too stringent. You can think six weeks is, is too much. Putting your personal opinion about that aside. It is not true that women are being stripped of their reproductive rights if they are allowed to have an abortion up until six weeks. And by the way, that statute allows exceptions, and I'm reading directly here from the statute, or that's not, sorry, I want to be very precise. I'm reading here from the Daily Wire's summary of the statute. That six weeks uh, uh, statute allows exceptions for, quote, the life of the mother, rape, incest, and real fatal fetal abnormalities. Okay. Again, we have to set the record straight here. This is why I'm taking the time to tell you these facts, because these myths just get spread that, that people, you know, women in general are writ large being stripped of their freedoms. Kamala Harris, our vice president, said the other day that we're going back to the time, you know, of our mothers and grandmothers of, you know, before women could vote. And there's this effort to repeal the rights of women. It, it's so dishonest. And this is coming from someone who herself who wouldn't even be wouldn't fully consider myself to be 100% pro-life. I'm an I am an objective person who is looking at this objectively. And by the way, to speak more about Florida, Florida has a ballot initiative this November which would allow which 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 will allow Floridians to vote on this matter of abortion. And if they vote to pass the measure, it would guarantee a woman's right to an abortion up until six months of pregnancy. That's what's going on in, you know, Handmaid's Tale, Ask Florida. It's so dishonest. And then we have the leaders of <laughs> the future leaders of the United States and perhaps the future leaders of the world throwing out these assertions like that. So that was number one, women dealing with the fallout of not having of having their reproductive rights stripped. The second one, immigrants fleeing places where there are no universities left from which to graduate. Do you understand? I, I, I'm not even trying to be facetious right now. Do you understand what he's saying? <laughs> what is what is he saying? Like they can't well, go to university? I, I, I think he's. He's alluding to the fact that there may be countries where there aren't universities to graduate from. Oh, I I'm see. Not, I'm ignorant to that. Oh, I, don't know if that's I see. True. I see. Have have universities been shut down in other countries? I don't. I don't know. So he's saying we're representing immigrants fleeing places. Okay. All right. Well, that's. I. No. I. Okay. That's that's a good clarification. Okay. That's there's nothing wrong with that statement. He's saying we will possibly be representing immigrants. Okay. Fine. He goes on to saying we'll be representing, quote, trans and queer people fo forced to hide who they are. Yeah, I, I, I gave that same face. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where they're hiding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't with respect. I, <laughs> I don't think hide is not a word that I would use with respect. I mean, come on. It just 
again, the reason I'm highlighting this is it shows such a stark disconnect with what is really going on in America. You know where trans and queer people have to hide who they are? In places like half of Africa's 54 countries, which criminalize homosexuality, including, in, in some cases, the death penalty, like in Uganda. You know where trans and queer people have to hide who they are? In a place like communist China or in Putin's Russia, where none of that is allowed. That is where tra trans, why am I saying trans? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting trans and queer, the two words uh, jumbled together. That is where trans and queer people have to hide who they are. It, it, it is such a lie about America. And by the way, it is such a lie about conservatives that, that conservatives are these trans and queer and LGBTQ hating people. Let me tell you, I am conservative. I have been steeped in the conservative media world for four years. I have a talk show with Dennis Prager. I, I interviewed Larry Elder recently. I have met, and I'm not saying this as a brag, I'm saying this as I know a lot of the most like prominent conservatives in America. I have never met a single conservative who hates trans people or hates queer people. The conservative position on this matter is very simple. And again, of course, there are some crazies who may hate trans people. Or, of course, there, there are always exceptions. But the conservative position on this matter is don't trans the kids. That's really it. If you want to be trans when you are of the right age to make a decision of informed consent about your body, you have a right to do that. It's a free country. If you'd like to change your name, if you'd like to change your pronouns, you have a right to do that. It's a free country. What conservatives are opposing is not transing the kids in schools, not having, as I reported yesterday, the Seattle Public School District have a health care organization. This is a Daily Wire reporting that touts that they give hormone therapy as part of gender affirming care to elementary and middle school students in Seattle public schools. That is what conservatives are opposing. Conservatives are opposing all of these school districts, and I have profiled so many of them on this show, who are teaching people as young as kindergarten about non-binaryism, that they may not be their gender. Look up Illinois School District number 65. They have this on the internet. You can go to PowerPoint slides and see what they are teaching preschoolers, kindergartners about these matters. Come on, it's ridiculous. He's saying trans and queer people are forced to hide who they are. No, that's not what's going on. By the way, look at what our Department of Justice is doing. The Department of Justice right now is suing the state of Tennessee because Tennessee passed a law which bans puberty blockers and gender altering surgeries for minors. And our country's Department of Justice is suing that state and saying that that statute in Tennessee is discrimination. That shows you, and I think that's despicable, but that shows you just how much trans and queer people by our government are in, in their view, they're being protected. In my view, I think it's a despicable thing to give hormone blockers to children. But you understand my point. He's, he, he is talking about this, this reality, which does not writ large exist. The opposite exists, that a lot of this has been made very mainstream and indeed been proselytized to children. But nevertheless, a Harvard Law School student is getting up and saying that in general in America, trans and queer people have to hide who they are. Let's go on to more. Climate refugees escaping homes that have become uninhabitable. What? Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep going. One in three black boys who is ex expected to go to jail in his lifetime. I mean, we know we know all of the the left talking points on this. I mean. <laughs> There is not overwhelming evidence that the United States of America is throwing black people in prison because they are black. That's just the truth. There is not overwhelming evidence of that occurring. In fact, it, there have been, look at what Heather McDonald just reported in the Wall Street Journal and in the City Journal. There's something called the California Racial Justice Act that was passed in 2020, which allows people 
who have who are in prison to challenge their conviction based and they can argue that their conviction was was handed down in systemic bias. Now, again, there is not overwhelming evidence that there is right now in America systemic bias against black people in the prison system or in the policing system. But we also know that there have been so many measures that have been taken, including this one, to possibly provide some recourse if that is the case. And by the way, Heather McDonald outlined how how very uh, irrational this this law is and kind of the loopholes and provisions which are not going to amount to anything good. I'll let you read that Wall Street Journal article for yourself to to uh, get some more of those points. But it's just it's just the the constant peddling of America is a, you know, minority hating, oppressive, terrible place. For people, and we Harvard graduates have to represent all of these people in this against this horrible entity that is America. And I, again, it is just so gross. And that doesn't mean, of course, I, I feel it's so hard because you always have to provide these caveats. Of course, there are some trans people and queer people and black people who are discriminated against in this country. Of course. Just when people talk about police brutality, of course there are instances of police brutality. But again, this person is talking about this like this is the the widespread fundamental reality in America. And that is just not true. And then the the culminating, as I said, the whammy to end all whammies, citizens whose only mistake was being born poor in a country like America, which criminalizes poverty. Sean's Sean's going like like that. I mean, do you know how lucky we are to live in a place like America, which has which has a great welfare state? I don't necessarily mean great in terms of a moral judgment, but great in terms of its size. I mean, look at what happened during COVID with all of the stimulus that was provided to citizens, to businesses. We're so lucky to live in a country which tries to help people who are in poverty. Now, I actually th think America could do a much better job, a more effective job at helping people who are in poverty. But to say that America as a country criminalizes poverty with all of the uh, with all that we try to do to help people, not just in our own country, but people who are not in our own country, as we know, millions of illegal immigrants have flocked to our southern border over the past three years, and they are fleeing war-torn, poverty-stricken countries to come get a better life in America. In places like New York, there's a program of $53 million in prepaid debit cards to give those individuals food and shelter. But America criminalizes poverty. Absurd. Absolutely absurd. I don't even know what that means. America who? <laughs> America what? I know. Are you talking about our politicians that line their pockets and create a larger gap between the rich and the poor, crushing the middle class? Who who is America? Who are you mad at? Mic drop. Big business. Mm-hmm. Like I honestly, it seems like they reward poverty. They're paying off your student loans. <laughs> I, I, Good I, point. Come on Absolutely. now. Absolutely.